Good morning. It is Tuesday, September the 19th, in the year of our Lord, 2023. I'm J.D. Walt, and this is your wake-up call. Let's begin today with consecration. Ephesians 5.14 says, Wake up, sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Jesus, I belong to you. I lift up my heart to you. I set my mind on you. I fix my eyes on you. I offer my body to you as a living sacrifice. Jesus, we belong to you. And we're praying in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's entry is entitled, Rise Up, O Men of God. Our text is Acts chapter 6, verses 5 to 7. Hear now the word of the Lord. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Now consider this. I want us to know, notice what happens when seven men step up to the plate of calling in the local church. But first, let's remember the context of the story at hand. A bona fide problem arose in the matter of the distribution of food for the widows in the church. It was not simple as it involves some complexities around ethnicity. Let's remember again how they solved the problem. Number one, find people who are, quote, known to be full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Number two, lay hands on them, publicly commissioning them for the work. And number three, turn them loose. Now let's notice what happened. Number one, the word of God spread. Number two, the number of disciples increased rapidly. And number three, a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. No shaming people into service, no begging for volunteers, no committee meetings. Seven men simply stepped up. Then and now, there is an overabundance of godly women involved in the servant leadership of local churches. Still, we need more. However, in too many local churches, there is a dearth of men meaningfully involved. Why is this? I don't want to overread into the text. But there is no evidence the apostles called for men in this instance owing to patriarchal proclivities. It would actually make better sense for a number of reasons to have women looking after widows than men doing so. Admittedly, I am speculating here, but I wonder if men were stepping up to the plate in the early church. At least I do want to appeal to the plain correlation we see in the text between the seven men standing in the gap and the reported flourishing of the church. 
The last thing I want to do here is harangue men to be more involved. It never works. And you usually wind up with the same men showing up who would have been there anyway. So how do we get to the hearts of the masses of men in our time? I don't think it will happen through more urgent appeals for volunteers to serve. The greatest need is not for their hands, but for their hearts. I think we have ample examples of local churches who have the hands of men and even the minds of many, but we're missing men's hearts. Men are watching and waiting for the call to nobility and the invitation to noble pursuit. It's heart level. And I'm almost sure there's a strong connection between this kind of noble heart and being filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. What if this is the starting line? Instead of trying to get men more involved in the church, what if we sought to inspire them to be filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom? It's interesting, the exact words of the apostles. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. This was not a call for men who claimed to be full of the Spirit and wisdom, but men who were known to be. Few men will ever respond to that invitation, and those that do are not the drones you're looking for. Deep down, men want to be known deep down. They don't want to be known for their skills and abilities or for their achievements and accomplishments. They want to be known for their hearts and their character. They want to be known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. I'm sure there will be a line of men and women looking to take me on for this post today. I suspect, though, the multitude of men are quietly leaning in as their hearts are being lifted up. The prayer of transformation, Lord Jesus, I am your witness. I receive your righteousness and release my sinfulness. I receive your wholeness and release my brokenness. I receive your fullness and release my emptiness. I receive your peace and release my anxiety. I receive your joy and release my despair. I receive your healing and release my sickness. I receive your love and release my selfishness. Come, Holy Spirit, transform my heart, mind, soul, and strength so that my consecration becomes your demonstration, that our lives might become your sanctuary for the glory of God our Father. Amen. The question, so how about it, men? Am I close? Women? Today we're going to sing the hymn, Rise Up, O Men of God. It's hymn number 518 in our seedbed hymnal, our great Redeemer's praise, number 518, 518, rise up, O men of God. Let's sing it. Let's sing it in the spirit as though we're calling out in Jesus' name to the men in our communities. Rise up, O men of God, have done with lesser things. Give heart and mind and soul and strength to serve the King of kings. 
Rise up, O men of God, His kingdom tarries long. Bring in the day of brotherhood and in the night of wrong. Rise up, O men of God, the church for you doth wait. Her strength unequal to her task, rise up and make her great. Lift high the cross of Christ, tread where his feet have trod. As brothers of the Son of Man, rise up, O men of God. Amen. I love that. Rise up, O men of God, have done with lesser things. Give heart and mind and soul and strength to serve the King of Kings. I do hope this is being received in the spirit in which I'm sharing it today. You know, I I think I don't blame men for not wanting and not rising up to be involved in so much of what we have called church over the last 50 years. I just sometimes question, like, is have we seen the church? Or have we seen just some machination that we're calling the church? Uh, that's overstated for sure. But I don't blame men for not wanting to be involved in an anemic expression of church. So. That creates a little bit, though, of a chicken and an egg problem because we need men to rise up and claim the day. I mean, and this is not somehow some sort of men over women. That's not what I'm getting at at all here. I mean, I think we would probably agree that women are playing uh critical and key roles in the church in responding to God's calling on their lives we're missing it with the men i think in many places and and uh for those of you men who are whose hand is to the plow i'm not haranguing you like you need to do more that's not the point i'm saying i think we're calling out to the multitudes of men, and saying, wake up, sleepers, you know, rise from the dead. This is our shift, and and we're not trying to get you involved in churchy activity. This is not about the institution. This is about the great need of our time. Our sons and our daughters are dying on the vine, the I mean, the, I don't need to go into the data, but we're living in a five-alarm fire in this culture alone, if not around the world, and we need reinforcements. We need men, and again, not to rise up into sort of busyness and churchly activity. This is the field. This is the game. This is the world that's at stake. And... um All of the human agencies and institutions of our time simply don't have, even combined, the firepower, the candle power, the wisdom to meet the need of our time. The church of Jesus Christ, the church Jesus is building the, this is the moment, this is the point, and this is a heart calling. This is a heart calling. This is not a warm and fuzzy thing I'm getting at today. I think you see that. This is nobility. I mean, this is like the stuff. So, I'll close there. It's Tuesday. It is Tuesday. we got to be done with lesser things. Rise up, O men of God. The church for you doth wait. Her 
strength unequal to her task, rise up and make her great. Much that once was is no longer, for none now live who remember it. It's time to rise up into the to the ancient memory of what this is all about. Well, we're on Tuesday. It's New Room Week. We're all gathered down in uh, Houston in the Woodlands, Texas, where we're getting ready to start the New Room Conference. Starts tomorrow at noon, tomorrow morning with pre-conferences. We do treasure your prayers. Jesus, move in our midst. Holy Spirit, bring outpouring. And, yeah, change the atmosphere in which we're living. For those of you who are coming or are going to be on the live stream, we're looking forward to seeing you. Prepare your hearts. This is not another conference. In fact, we hardly even think of it as a conference. It's a meeting with Jesus. And so we are consecrating ourselves unto the Lord, as Joshua says, for tomorrow he will do amazing things. All right, let's call that a morning. Get out on the field today. Eyes open, ears open, hearts open. And uh, be bold, be courageous, be filled with the love of God. The world is desperate for it. For the awakening. I'm J.D. Walt. We hope that today's entry challenged and encouraged you. And thanks for listening to The Wake Up Call, powered by Seedbed. Be sure to share this with a friend. Leave us a rating and subscribe wherever you prefer to listen to podcasts. Find out more and join the movement by visiting our website at seedbed.com slash wakeupcall. 